R2 Builders, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be building the Mike Center Frame and it is going to be made out of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and half inch Baltic birch plywood. You can find this at any real lumber supply yard. Don't go to the box stores. The birch plywood that they have is not the stuff that you want. You want real Baltic birch. It's quality plywood, it's thick, and it's going to be made out of the materials that you want to build this frame out of. I have everything laid out. This is on a half inch piece of Baltic birch. I have your two quarter inch wings, your full and your cut wing. I have your two right there in the middle, and then I have your eighth ring. Seven templates that are going to be used for the uprights. There will be a total of 10 uprights, that's where you see the gaps there. I traced all of them out, that way you know what we're going to be cutting. Over here is the top plate on your left and the base plate on your right. And just above that is the side plate. There will be two of those that cut out. I can use the same pattern. I just have to flip it over to get the right and left sides. Here are the 10 uprights being cut. Originally, I laid these all out with the patterns, but then I decided it'd just be easier to make the uprights if I just cut them straight out. That way I had as little routing to do as possible. Here you can see at the top, I'm using that little push stick. Always use that, that's why they make them. Some people choose not to use them, but if you want your fingers, I'd suggest using them since hand injuries are the most common things when it comes to using power tools. Here are the two side plates that I am cutting. I laid them out on the board this way, that way it'd be easier. I'm just cutting right down the middle. A bandsaw would be useful for this, that way you can cut all around the edges and get them as close as possible. Trying to route out a lot of thickness is not good and it's really hard on the router because this wood is very hard wood. Right here I've got double sided tape. This is the foam kind, I'm applying it to the upright in as many spots as I can that way it stays press down on the tape really good peel off the backing I decided to mount this in such a way to where it's pressed flat with the slot upright that is going to go facing the skin that way I don't have to route that out so press it firm you can see I've got my slots here make sure all your slots are also exactly the amount you want if you're using a half inch bit that way it can fit right in otherwise you're going to get stuck and you'll see that here so this is a little bit thick as you can see me cutting and it does make it very hard on that router to go through it will do it but the thinner the better as you see once i round this corner here it's going to move a lot easier because it is a thinner piece of wood that it's having to go through so i route this through i come up to this slot and we're going to do a climb cut uh, you can see this in some of Thomas Clark's videos as he explains, it's to minimize tear out. You go forward and then pull it back just a little bit. I didn't have any trouble going either way and I did minimize my tear out regardless. To me it's not as big a deal because it is a frame, it's not like anyone's going to see it. Here the router bit doesn't fit quite into the slot as it should. That's how I made it. I wound up going back later and I etched that out and then I used the router to get it. So here I go, I continue going around the edge of this upright. I keep going a little more till we hit the other slot. We climb route that slot as well. And you don't have to climb route the slots if you don't want. You can also use a smaller bit on these like a 3 8 That's also in one of Thomas Clark's videos if you can find it. So here's the last slot and then we have a quarter slot. And coming up, you will see I have a lot of thickness. And for some reason, this router took a huge kick and it literally shifted the whole template off to the right-hand side of the screen. I go around this slot. I cut this slot out later on with a table saw. So here as I come around this corner, because it's so thick, I take a huge kick and this is a big cut. As you can see, there's that kick and the tape showing. So right here you can see I do not have a lot to route off and this goes rather fast even when I round these corners. The less to cut for the wood the faster it is and it's easier on the bit. Again this is some very hard wood so you do need to be careful with it. Here's another slot that we're going to go route out and doing another climb cut on that. 
simply goes in and out. It does jump a little bit, so you know you just have to work careful with your wood. Remember, avoid your hand placement. You don't want to get your fingers chopped off. This is a router. It does route everything known to man. Might even route some metal. We're coming to the end of this piece right here, and it just is real simple. It goes all the way to the end. I sometimes get a little bit just on that very end. Uh, sometimes you want to go back and just go over it one more time. Here I'm using my table saw to cut out this quarter inch part since I don't have a bit for that or a dotto blade. I'm just simply going over it with the table saw, three swipes, and it's done. I do that with both of them, and it's that fast. It leaves a really clean cut and it's flat as you can see once I'll show you this right here. Nice and flat, good groove. Right here I'm going to just show you one more time that if you do have less wood to take off it goes a lot faster and it's a lot less harsh on this bit. We're going to go up, we're going to do another climb cut and this will be the last of these uprights that I show you since there are 10 of them you don't have to see them all move along that edge and here's our climb cut right here goes right into the slot and just be careful it might take a little kick on you but hold that firm it is always a good idea after you're done routing just to go around the edges one extra time that way you make sure you got everything So you'll notice right here we're about to cut this and you see that huge thick piece of wood. This is going to go flying off of the screen because it's so thick. The best thing to do is to slowly route off pieces of that or cut it best off if you can. So here it goes flying off the screen. Got to route out that little tear out right there which isn't too bad. Again, be careful, things like that it's always best to route that out. This is the last of the uprights, it's really thin, cuts like butter. As we come around this edge, you can see there's not as much to take off, but I do take off more from the tear off from the previous slot that you saw where it just flung forward. So I'm going to route all that out to avoid that because that can be injury prone to people. And here you see all the slots. There's all 10 of them all cut out. And they're all ready to go. This here is the middle ring or center ring, however you want to call it. I have all that double stick tape on there. I'm going to put it down. You can see in the middle, I decided to save on wood and I etched out all my templates on there for the quarter ring, side wings, and the uh, eighth ring. So I'm just going to slowly route this out going into the slots, doing climb cuts as you can see. Uh, I do an unconventional way of getting the center. I drill a hole through the middle of it, or not through the middle, I drill a hole close to the edge stick that over the bit be careful doing that it's not the best way to do it it's the only way that I know how to do it so that's what I did here I'm just going around the edge of this and I'm getting all these little slots that'll be made remember these slots are smaller than every other slot because this actually goes in through behind all the slots here's the last one I cut out a bunch of those so you didn't have to bother seeing it and I do go around this edge one last time that way it's all nice and flush So I'm going to drill a hole right here with my half inch bit. As I said earlier, I don't know any other way to do this. I'm sure there is a way. So if you don't agree with this, don't follow it and do it your own way. I drill the hole all the way through. This isn't the best way to do it. Like I said, sticking the drill bit all the way through there. Kicking it on, you'll see some kick here. Right there is the kick. 
and then I just go all the way around. This is thick wood. I don't even know if I'm going the right direction with this because I'm still new to using a router. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I do reverse directions to go the other way, but because I'm doing a whole thick cut, this is half inch of wood that we're taking off. It does take a little bit more time. As you can see, I do have those templates there that I'm going to use in the middle as well. I'm finishing this cut right here. This pulls out just a little bit. Then just go around this inside edge one more time and just clean it all up. This concludes the video on how to do the first part of the center frame. On the next video, we're going to do the side plates and the wings. As always, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like.